Welcome back, everyone. We're so honored to have Dr. David Brownstein with us today. He's an author, lecturer, and renowned expert in holistic family medicine. Dr. Brownstein graduated from Wayne State University Medical School and practices in the Detroit suburbs, where he's the medical director of the Center for Holistic Medicine. He's the author of Iodine, Why You Need It, why you can't live without it. We're gonna talk all about this today. This is gonna be amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Brownstein, for traveling all this way to Texas. Thank you for having me, Cindy. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, doctor, for joining us. In your book, you say that iodine is the most misunderstood nutrient. Why is that, doctor? Well, there's so many misperceptions about iodine out there that iodine is a toxic substance, that we get enough iodine from salt, mm -hmm. that no one should ever supplement with iodine, that iodine causes thyroid problems. I mean, that's what I was taught in yeah, medical school. I've heard school. all of that. I've heard all of that. We all, we've yeah. all heard that, especially yeah, those of us who went to medical school. Uh -huh. But iodine is an essential ingredient <laughs> that we don't get enough of from our diet, that the ma vast majority of us are deficient in, that I think its deficiency is leading to this epidemic of thyroid problems and breast problems, ovarian problems, mm -hmm. uterine problems, and prostate problems. Mm -hmm. Well, honey, I yes. thought we got enough in salt. Well, that's the general notion. If you're using iodized salt, we're getting enough. This isn't true? That is a falsity. It's a falsity, iodine. okay. Falsity of conclusion about iodine. Only 10% of the iodine in iodized salt is bioavailable, and people aren't using enough salt, period. Yeah, we're telling everybody, cut back on your salt, so. Well, the body needs huge amounts of sodium and huge mm. amounts of chloride to run optimally. Now. I'm not a big fan of refined salt because it takes all the minerals out of salt. I think people should use salt, but they should use the right kind of salt, which is unrefined salt, and then supplement with iodine because there's very little iodine in unrefined salt. When you say unrefined, is that like sea salt? Is that well, sea salt, yeah. all salt can be characterized as sea salt since it all came from the ocean at some time. Okay. I would say uh, th examples of unrefined salt include Celtic brand salt or mm -hmm. Redmond salt. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty inexpensive good sources of unrefined salt that contain a lot of minerals in them that I put actively put my patients on and tell them to use. Yeah. I love to use the Celtic salt and I think it, it has tastes great better. Flavor. Yeah it does, it does. But even if it's iodized it's not enough. It's mm -hmm. clearly not enough. Okay. Not in today's toxic world we live in. Help us understand what iodine does in our bodies. So iodine concentrates in the glandular tissue so when we ingest food with iodine or take an iodine supplement it goes preferentially to the glands of the body, like the thyroid, mm -hmm. the breasts, mm -hmm. the ovaries, the uterus, and the prostate. And iodine is used in those tissues to maintain a normal architecture of the glandular tissue. What that means is if we have enough iodine, the architecture of the thyroid and the breasts and the ovaries and the rest of the gland tissue is normal. Well, when iodine deficiency comes into play, this tissue starts to get disrupted. And the first thing that happens is you get cysts to form in the tissues. And if it goes on for a longer period of time, those cysts become hard and not more nodular. You know, like fibrocystic breast? Absolutely. That that's, is so common. That's iodine deficiency, and that's occurring in over 80% of women right now. Um, and wow. if, if it goes on, the cysts become nodular. If it goes on, they become hyperplastic, which is a fancy yeah. term for precancerous. Right. And if it goes on, it becomes cancer. And studies have shown in in, in test tubes, animals, and humans that iodine can rectify this change this continuum wherever it catches it and bring the tissue back to normal. Okay. Really? Uh, help me understand, how much iodine a day does it take to prevent a goiter? You know, swollen gland here. Well, this is where iodized salt has come into play. And the reason salt was iodized about 90 years ago was to prevent goiter, which was occurring at epidemic rates across the United States. So iodized salt is effective to prevent goiter or swelling of the thyroid. Okay. The problem is, in today's toxic world is not providing enough iodine for the rest of the tissues of the body to maintain their normal architecture. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're seeing so many problems with breast tissue and ovarian tissue, uterine, prostate, and even thyroid so, tissue. So you're saying that the increase in breast cancer, in part at least, is due to this prevalence of iodine deficiency. I would absolutely say that. And you know, one of three men eventually will get prostate cancer. You're saying that's playing a role in that as well. The studies aren't as clear with the prostate as okay. it is with the breast, but I would say the answer to that is correct. That yeah. my answer is yes, you're well, right. You really have a that. problem. Okay. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Well, I mean, just this is a whole new topic to me. Yes. I mean, I just this it's is new a, territory this is a brand us. new day. So your iodine levels—that's not something your body can get without an outside source, i.e., yeah, dietary supplementation. You don't make it. You don't store it. 
right or wrong? We were designed to get iodine from our food. The problem is our food supply has been stripped of iodine, so, um, and our food supply has these toxic chemicals in it that push iodine out of our body. So we're, we're okay. I call it the double whammy of iodine, where we're not getting enough and we're exposed to all these chemicals in our right. food that are pushing iodine right. out. So what I'm getting at is it's not age specific then. So we're not saying we go along in life, we're healthy, 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 healthy. Oh, when I'm 50, I start declining my levels of iodine or the way I use it or whatever. We're saying that everybody cradle to the grave. We need iodine at all iodine. times in our lives. Yeah. And, and can't get enough. And it's very difficult in today's world to get enough from our food supply. Well, you mentioned in your book that one third of the world's population <laughs> lives in iodine deficient areas. But it, does this occur in the United States? Absolutely, it occurs in the United States. Um, I live in Michigan, which in the old, you know, 100 years ago, was known as the goiter belt because a vast majority of the population was suffering from swollen thyroids because really? our soil's very iodine deficient. That goiter belt rides across the whole central United States all the way down, including your state, yes. Texas. Yes. Um, There's a lot of food produced in all these states. There's so a lot that of food is produced. low in iodine as well? That food's low in iodine. Okay. And food on the coast near the ocean should be have a higher iodine content. The problem is that our exposure to pollutants has pushed iodine out of that food, and we're getting less iodine now than we did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I wonder if you can treat your soil with iodine if you garden. Absolutely you can. That's what the Japanese have done. They treat their soil with seaweed, which is a good source of iodine, oh, yeah. and their food has much more iodine in it. Uh, See, that's uh -huh. another reason to have a hothouse. That's my new project. Okay, so we have depleted soils. Give us the other reasons why iodine levels are dropping. Depleted well, soil. Well, the United States government's own nutritional and health examination survey has shown iodine levels have fallen 50 over 50 percent in our entire population over the last 30 years. Uh -huh. Now remember, that's during the time that we're iodine salt still available. So yeah. something's happening that is depleting iodine in our bodies and we're not getting enough in and the consequences are, are severe. The consequences are thyroid problems, breast problems like fibrocystic breast disease and breast cancer prostate problems, ovarian problems, uterine problems, adrenal problems, wherever iodine is supposed to concentrate. So if you don't have a, if you're really low in iodine, you can get a goiter. But it doesn't take much iodine to prevent the goiter. We're talking about prevention of cancer, other types of thyroid disease, etc. cetera. With, with the higher levels, we have protection from other problems. That's absolutely okay. true. Okay. So okay. for example, autoimmune thyroid illness, Hashimoto's and Graves' disease is occurring at epidemic rates right now. It is. Conventional medicine has no answer for Hasn't why it clue. occurs. Hasn't a clue. Uh -uh. It's What's interesting is if you look at all the studies on autoimmune thyroid disease, you cannot induce autoimmune thyroid disease in animals unless you make them iodine deficient oh. and give them, usually they give them a substance that takes iodine out of their body or disrupts iodine in their thyroid. Wow, amazing. Okay, we read in your book, uh, you, you talked about things that take the place of iodine. It will push it out of the system. Uh, for the chemists, it's the halides. Okay, explain this concept of things that push the, the iodine out of our bodies. So we learn in chemistry about mm -hmm. competitive inhibition, and the halides are a class of chemicals, group 17 in the periodic table, that contains bromide, fluoride, chlorine, and iodine. Hey, wait, wait, fluoride? That's in the water, it keeps my teeth strong. Well, that's what they say, but that's never been proven. Well, explain, we gotta understand this. Fluoride's a poison that poisons hundreds of enzymes in the body, there are no studies that prove that uh, fluoridated uh, water supply has less cavities than non-fluoridated water supplies. In fact, most of Europe has taken fluoride out of their water supplies because they've read the studies and understand yeah. that fluoridation of the water so does not do anything for cavities. Every sip of municipal water I drink with fluoride is pushing a little more iodine out of my system. Am I getting that right? You're getting that right, oh. and it's poisoning the receptors that, that need to bind iodine. So it just it's another double whammy that makes it worse. Bromine. So, bromine is in that family as well. How about you? And bromine, if you get enough bromine in your body, it pushes iodine out and binds to where iodine is supposed to bind to. Now, my partners and I have tested a lot of people for bromine, um, nearly a thousand people, and we found every single patient tested, regardless of their health status, uh -huh. some have been sick, some have been healthy, are toxic in bromine. Okay. And generally, the people that are sicker have higher bromine levels than people that are not that aren't sick, but everybody has high bromine levels. Uh -huh. Bromine is found in our food supply in breads and pastas and cereals. It's found in 
uh, mattresses and clothing and baby clothing. Mattresses. It's used as a fire retardant. And ah. the government mandates that mattresses and couches and curtains all have brominated sure. chemicals in them to prevent fire, but which has never been shown to prevent fire anyways. <laughs> but it's also in all our computer equipment and iPods and things like that. So let's go to our break and then we'll talk more about things in our environment that are displacing iodine out so we can't use it as well. We're building the case as to why you need to supplement iodine. We'll have more when we return.